Hello and welcome to our session, Slicks and the Importance of Reflecting in Community. I'm Catherine Lithgow with the Centre for Teaching Excellence at the University of Waterloo. Uh, to begin, what is a SLIC? So SLIC stands for Student-Led Individually Created Courses and refers to a reflective learning and assessment framework that was developed at the University of Edinburgh. SLICs promote student ownership of their learning by allowing students to co-create their learning experience, which in turn leads to deeper student engagement. The SLIC framework helps students identify and articulate to themselves and others professional skills and attributes that they developed and deployed while completing their chosen project. SLICs also help students plan for and track their growth and development, and it improves their ability to self-assess. Now, the students begin by creating a project proposal. They personalize the course learning outcomes to their project um, context by including an audit of the skills that they currently have, the skills they would need to develop, how they will go about developing those skills, and how they will assess themselves upon completion of their proposed learning opportunity. They also comment on the impact that this uh, learning experience will have on their future studies and for themselves personally and professionally. They're required to submit a midterm report and a final report, and they receive feedback on the proposal and both reports. Now, throughout the project, they are expected to complete weekly blogs or reflections on the process of their learning and provide evidence of how they are progressing on their learning outcomes. They don't receive feedback on the weekly reflections. Now, notice that the focus of the SLIC is on the student's personal learning journey. You know, their personal development of skills, mindsets, and development of reflective practice. It's not a focus on the attainment of discipline-specific knowledge. Now, with support from a light grant, uh, we are adapting the University of Edinburgh's SLIC model to the UW context, and the Jenny 415 course provides an example of how we are adapting it. Jenny 415 was designed to provide an opportunity for student leaders within the Faculty of Engineering to earn course credit by critically examining their extensive leadership experience they had gained outside the boundaries of a course. And although the focus is on leadership, uh, the SLICs in this course allows each student to examine this topic through a lens that is personally meaningful to them. So we had students look at leadership through a mental health lens, another through equity, diversity and inclusion lens, for example. Now, one critical um, adaptation that we made to the Edinburgh SLICs framework was the intentional incorporation of opportunities for students to reflect in community. Our preliminary work with SLICs had found that students had found it really challenging to complete these individual weekly reflections. They didn't know what to write, they didn't know how to respond to the reflective prompts. And we know that critical reflection is a skill, uh, that it's learned through practice, it's a meaning-making process, and it's also an emotional exercise. It has to take place in community. And so while the instructors um, did introduce students to reflective frameworks, they were very intentional in creating a supportive and trusting environment where students could provide each other with uh, meaningful peer support. Now, having students co-create their learning experience, you know, by designing and assessing that learning experience is a very new concept, you know, to many, new to instructors and new to students. And it really pushes um, students and instructors out of their comfort zone, which can be uncomfortable to both of the stakeholders. So just as we are encouraging students to reflect in community, we created a slick learning community to help instructors learn from and support each other. So reflecting in community has been important for all stakeholders, instructors and students alike. And now I'm going to pass it over to Mary Robinson, one of the course instructors. Hey, thank you, Catherine, for kicking us off today. Hi everyone, my name is Mary Robinson and I'm one of the instructors of Jenny or General Engineering 415 along with Carolyn McGregor. You can see from the arrow down below that we followed the general slicks model. Uh, the students did a proposal, there were working sessions, opportunities for reflection, and of course a final project uh, product and reflection report that went along with it. However, because we did this in the winter 2022 term, we had a lot of hiccups along the way. Um, well, first of all, this was a brand new course. Uh, it had been on the books for many, many years, but uh, nobody had taken it for over 20 years. So we dusted that off, went through the approvals process to run it. 
um, tried a new pedagogy as well. So connecting with Catherine and some of Wayne Chang's learnings for how this model had been used in other engineering courses, we thought, hey, we'll give it a go. We were both uh, new co-instructors, so we've each taught considerably on our own in different departments and different styles of courses, but this was the first time that we worked together as associate deans. Um, and we also were dealing with COVID, so we were hoping to be in person, but as you may remember in December, we pivoted to online due to Omicron, flipped back to in-person in February. So what we had planned to do in the classroom ended up being done online, all kinds of hiccups with room bookings. It, it was a perfect storm of things that could go wrong. So one piece of advice we would like to share with everybody here is anytime you're going to try something new, consider those proviso statements like the one that's at the top of the screen here. This one served us very, very well as we introduced this new slicks model in a COVID term. And um, we did have to do a little bit of wiggling with course deliverables, um, of course, in conversation with the students. And uh, we're very glad that we had that wiggle room. So what did we learn about slicks and reflection? Well, some of it comes to us through something that was shared by some of our students. That 20% of the work is visible. It gets captured in those reflection reports or in the slick reports, but 80% or more of it is invisible, but so, so necessary. Um, and this also translates over to leadership. So much of the work happens without people being aware of the work that's being put in, but it is so necessary to put that work in. So throughout the term, we had a lot of um, what we call tadas, ahas, and oopses, things that went really well and things that, well, maybe we would go back and change. And there's definitely some overlap between students and instructors as well. Uh, for the students, they really thought about why are they doing this particular slick and who is it for? Um, so helping the students get away from the I'm producing this thing to get the grades to get the credit to why am I doing this? What do I hope to learn out of this? What do I want to take away from this? The students also pointed out the difficulties associated with reflection. As Catherine mentioned, it's so hard, but so critical and powerful. So figuring out how to do it regularly was an important learning. We also recognized that the students needed the opportunity to prepare for transition. All of these were 4B engineering students preparing for life after graduation, and many of them had been heavily involved in leadership roles through the peak of COVID, and they were tired and burnt out and needed an opportunity to look back, pull out, glean the good things, and to leave some of the bad things behind. As instructors designing a course, well, the course outline we started with had a lot of deadlines and a lot of structure to it. And as the term went on, we peeled a lot of that away. Um, the students wanted rubrics, so we gave them some basic guidelines, but didn't give them exact details about what to include and what not to include because we wanted them to go on this learning journey and figure out what they actually wanted out of this for themselves. Grades as motivators, grades as constraints. Um, some of our students really focused on the grades. What do I need to do to pass this course? And some of the best learning was when they let go of that. They were able to just be in the course, do the reflections, interact with their peers, and walk away. Um, and one of the big oopses for Carolyn and I, I guess it's kind of an aha and an oops, teamwork makes the dream work. We're both associate deans. We have demands on our time that sometimes, despite our best scheduling efforts, rear their ugly heads. So having somebody that we could pass off to was so wonderful to have. Flip side of that is, um, while we made some of those rookie mistakes, which parent is picking the kids up at school today? Um, so something for us to work on going forward. So our takeaways, we promised you three of them. The first one was really about the power of the slicks, and it gave the students the ability to define what leadership meant for them and what they wanted to either investigate, so looking back in time, or develop as they moved forward in time. And the students really gravitated to three of the areas that we suggested around communication, conflict, and emotional intelligence. And 4B is they're getting ready to graduate. That's a great time to think about it. Uh, students 
chose how they wanted to explore it, and they had the freedom to pivot as many times as they needed between the proposal and the final deliverable. And we saw some of that pivoting. Some students more or less stayed in the general direction that they'd laid out. One student wanted to really zero in on what skills they had learned as a leader to be able to better communicate that, um, say, to future employers. One student had planned to prepare this large report on their learning experience as a leader at the university. And what they ended up doing was letters of reflection to themselves. So future me one year, five years, 10 years from now. One of the biggest shifts that we saw was the student who realized that there really is no perfect way to do reflection. There really is no right way to be a leader and to just use those prompts to to reflect and grow in a way that was of value to them. Our second takeaway really is about the importance of an engaged community. We started online, which in some ways was good because students with scheduling conflicts were able to join our call and then catch up asynchronously on what would have been the contact or the conflict point. For our students, they engaged with each other both in class, so in our formal discussions and where we were prompting them to start to reflect on things, but they also engaged with each other outside of class. Um, a pair of students were working on a separate project where they were preparing a podcast, and out of it, both of them had really important reflections that came from that conversation about taking care of themselves and burnout. Some students interviewed each other one student slick project was around running a Twitch stream where they invited their classmates to come on. And this particular activity seemed to be a catalyst for every other student in the class where the act of being interviewed prompted them to then go deeper in their reflection. Some people interviewed other people in their world. Um, so classmates, um, other people that they had shared leadership roles with and some students did uh, did workshops with the teams that they were currently engaged in. So true reflection needs to happen in community and collaboration. Now, how did we go about building that engaged community? Well, it took a concerted effort and a lot of time was put into building that trust. So there were boundaries that were put on the course to create a safe space, but also a brave space. Um, so we built an ethics of engagement for the course. What do people need to be able to feel safe? Things like what happens in this class doesn't leave this group of people. Um, but also that brave space to push ourselves to grow a little bit more. So the encouragement to ask me those hard questions, ask me the and then to push me to grow further. And the students initially were really quiet, but through the conversation were able to grow and ask for what they needed to be successful. And oh my goodness, were they successful. We also as course instructors had to think about what safety looked like. Um, as tenured professors, as associate deans, it doesn't matter to us if this course doesn't go well, but for the students, they're about to graduate. They need this course credit and they may be investigating things that are uncomfortable. So how did we make them feel safe? Well, through some of the grading we did, um, either completion grades, you did a reflection check mark. Um, we also did some bucket grading, so based on the relative um, work that was put in that we could see, which again relates back to that 2080 rule, and um, throughout the term checking in with the class as a whole, but also as students individually, um, and making sure that they were getting the support they needed because we are not counselors. So as professionals needed to be consulted, making sure that that work was happening. So those are our three intended takeaways from the talk. Hopefully you've noticed them. We would love to hear from you about what you learned and um, what maybe you have noticed that we haven't included here. As instructors, Carolyn and I are indebted to this class. Um, the 10 students that we had, uh, it was one hell of a journey. We would, we didn't know what we were getting into, but absolutely it was the right move. And we really hope that the students have had the opportunity to grow and learn about themselves, at, both as leaders, but as individuals, and that this is really helping them with the transition into whatever comes next for them. Thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to your questions.